Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, I'm coming back at you with something brand new, super excited about it. Uh, we are doing a two-part series, Assault Mech Shootout. So, uh, we've got four mechs up on the roster. We have the Highlander, the Banshee, the King Crab, and the Atlas. All mechs you guys have been asking for, and we're going to pair them up in Comparos, two at a time and we're gonna see who really comes out as king of the hill. So, first up to end tonight, we're featuring the Banshee BNC3S against the Highlander, HGN 733P. So, thanks to Insaniac for not only recommending the Banshee, but also the 733P. Uh, it ended up being a really great matchup, as you guys are gonna see. Uh, which one's better? Well, you gotta stick around to find out, but I will say this, you know I love the Banshee, 95 tons, comes in at 1751 BV. It is a, it's a bargain for what you get. Just slabs of armor. Uh, but that Highlander, man, it's got jump jets, it's got the mobility, just packed with armor. And the 733P swaps out that big AC-20 for a PPC. So more long range punch, less ammo to detonate. It's an exciting matchup, guys. So stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. Alright guys, let's get this thing started. So we're going to kick off with the Banshee. We're going to take a look at uh, just the basic overview here of this mech. So uh, the BNC3S, right? So this particular variant is when the Banshee stops sucking and starts getting good. Uh, it was introduced in 3026. Now a lot of the older Banshees uh, had a 4.6 movement profile and that engine took up so much space, the mech barely had any weapons uh, on it at all that were useful. Uh, but this particular variant, I love. Um, again, you know, introduced in 3026 and actually persisted all the way through uh, 3150. You could still find them in the inner sphere and in the periphery uh, as well. So um, again, movement profile of 3.5. We talked about this in the intro. It's got a battle value of 1751, 95 ton mech. Um, so on to some of the technical details here. So 21 heat sinks on the chassis, that's a pretty substantial number um, and actually does quite well with the armament uh, that it does have. And this mech has an armor factor of 240, uh, which is 15 tons of armor, 81.9% uh, coverage on this particular mech, but just having to eat through 15 tons of armor is, uh, is no easy task. So this mech, again, just beastly in terms of, of armor uh, and just overall mass. And then on top of that, it has a 95 ton internal structure under it. So tons of pips there to eat through. Um, interestingly enough, no hand actuator on that left arm. Uh, right arm does have a hand actuator. So in that left arm, it does have a PPC, has another PPC on the right torso and AC 10 on the left torso. So this trio of weapons can dish out 30 damage per round at, uh, at 15 inches if you're playing you know, standard ranges or 20 inches if you're using extreme range rules. That's a substantial amount of damage. Um, in addition, it's backed up by four medium lasers and an SRM-6. That, another 20 points of damage plus another 12. Um, and that's got a couple of small lasers which very rarely come into play in the games that we play, but um, you know, still good backup weapons regardless for a half a ton each. So. Just overall, this mech has one of the most staggering uh, arrays of weapons, I think, uh, out of all of the mechs in the Succession Wars era. Uh, I really like the Banshee, really like the armament. Now, in terms of ammunition, it's not overloaded here. Um, it's got two tons of ammo for that AC-10, has a ton of ammo for that SRM-6, um, so not a ton there. Um, and that, uh, that ammo is pretty well protected by crit slots, as we'll see when we get into the defensive analysis. So the second mech we're gonna look at tonight is the Highlander HGN 733P. This is a 90 ton mech, uh, battle value of 1865. So it's almost 100, over 100 actually, 114 more than the Banshee, uh, which is just slightly heavier. Um, this mech is, uh, is a 2866 build date on it. So that's sort of early succession war. Uh, and it phased out towards the end of the Jihad. So you don't find this mech in the Republic era. 
um, presumably replaced by uh, you know bigger and better variants. Uh, we, we all know the one with the Gauss rifle, right? That's pretty tremendous. Um, the thing about the Highlander is its trademark, right? The Highlander burial, uh, and that is a death from above attack with that uh, with the jump capability. And when you get 90 tons of mech landing on you, uh, you just get crushed. So hence the Highlander Burial. Uh, phenomenal if you can actually pull it off in a game, uh, even, even as difficult as it is to pull off a DFA with those rules. Um, so this mech has 20 heat sinks. So also a substantial number of heat sinks on this mech. Um, again, we're talking Succession Wars, so all standard equipment, uh, fusion engine, standard gyro, so on and so forth. Now this mech, armor. 100% coverage, and that's why you're paying the premium 114 points or whatever it was on the battle value. That armor is very costly, so this mech packing 17.5 tons of armor, 2.5 tons more than that Banshee. Um, so this mech, hand actuator on the left side, no hand on the right side. In that right arm, it's mounting a PPC, has an LRM-20 in the left torso. So similar to the Banshee, uh, it is capable of dealing 30 points of damage at fairly long range. Of course, that LRM less reliable than those direct fire weapons in terms of dishing out consistent damage, um, but the threat is still there. When you get in close, that's backed up with two medium lasers and an SRM-6. So, not as much firepower as that Banshee, uh, but you know it has the same number of heat sinks, so it might be able to make more optimal use of that armament. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, in terms of ammo on this mech, so... Uh, it's got a lot. Two tons of SRM-6 ammo, two tons of LRM-20 ammo. I'm sorry, actually three tons of LRM-20 ammo, and that's split. Two tons in the left torso, one ton in the right torso, um, and then the left torso also housing two tons of SRM ammo. So it's like painful to say it out loud. It's got four tons of ammo in that left torso. So that could be a major risk factor when we get to the defensive analysis. We'll dig in and see. But before we get there, Let's dive in to our offensive benchmarks. Okay, so a couple of housekeeping items on this mech comparison. So I got your feedback on the Marauder. Uh, I relayed out this screen a little bit differently. Uh, I separated all of the pie charts, or rather the donut charts, so there's no more one inside the other. Everything's sort of split out. Still looking at sort of left to right, top to bottom. So anytime they're oriented um, top to bottom, the top mech is going to be the Banshee. Anytime they're oriented left to right, uh, the left mech is going to be the Banshee. So basically top left, always Banshee. Bottom right, always the Highlander. Now, moving into this, um, let's start with the offensive benchmark. So the heat benchmark, very telling on these mechs. So let's first focus on the white area charts for both of these mechs. Again, Highlander on the bottom, Banshee on the top. Wow, I mean, these mechs can really dish out absolutely a ton of damage. Um, the x-axis, I had a rescale to 40 points of damage. Remember, this is average damage per turn. So if you can average, you know, over 35 points or over 30 points of damage a turn, that's terrifying. Um, and the Banshee can do it. As you can see, when it gets later in the game, when it closes that gap, it gets within six inches, five inches, right? It can really dish out just an incredible amount of punishment. Um, the Highlander's a little, a little more quiet, but still delivers quite a punch, starting at the very beginning of the engagement all the way at 21 inches, um, and really all the way through to point blank, it can still churn out a decent amount of damage. It may seem like a lot less than the Banshee, because the Banshee has that huge uh, ramp up of damage once it gets those medium lasers and SRM-6 in play. However, but that LRM-20 is still very effective uh, and a very strong weapon throughout the range band, um, even within uh, to six inches. So when we look at the actual heat though, the Banshee is at a huge deficit. Um, it can build up an amazing amount of heat. Once you get into nine inches, uh, it's basically game over if you alpha strike. It can really you know, jump up a good you know, 10, 15 points on the heat meter pretty easily. A couple of turns of that and you're, you know, you're pretty much shut down. Um, so the Banshee is a little bit more delicate in that regard. Uh, you definitely have to watch out on that heat meter. Um, the Highlander, slightly more forgiving, but still has that capability of bringing that heat scale all the way up to 30 um, as needed. So on the damage benchmark side, so I always say that uh, heat is the currency for damage. And so you would expect that these mechs would be able to kind of push the limits a little bit, push the envelope for 
uh, substantially more damage, but actually that was not the case, uh, especially so in the Banshee. Basically, when you bring that AC-10 and that PPC into play and you're kind of cycling all of those big guns starting at 15 inches, um, the mech almost immediately jumps up the four points of heat uh, and it's just kind of sitting there uh, and it really can't afford to fire an additional PPC um, because you, you're either losing out on too much damage or you're building up too much heat, you're going to take on a gunnery penalty and thus, you know, you do less damage later. So really it was kind of interesting to see that um, this mech really had to be careful in terms of cycling its weapons. It was a bit of a balancing act. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the mech, again, doing tremendous amounts of damage, able to eke out a little bit of, uh, of optimized damage there uh, at point blank and then also at the five inch mark. On the Highlander side, at that six inch range, we had a really nice opportunity to alpha strike. The heat was at a manageable level. Um, the great thing about the Highlander is even if you alpha strike with all of your weapons uh, and you're walking, I believe it's only seven points of heat in total being built up, uh, which is really good. You know, you can unload a really solid amount of damage and really not take on uh, any substantial penalties. You can kind of back off, take a turn to cool off and do it again. Um, so this mech has some really interesting, um, I guess, damage potential, right? Very different from the Banshee. The Banshee is kind of a, a very steep ramp. You can see that damage kind of climb very aggressively. The Highlander more consistent over time. Um, so when it comes down to the numbers at the bottom there, the Banshee able to deliver more damage by about 20 points, you know, 17 to 20 points of damage uh, in the baseline and in the optimized testing. Uh, red line, what we're looking at there again, um, the Highlander just more forgiving on the heat meter and able to churn out more damage because it's taking on less penalties uh, throughout the game. So uh, kind of an interesting look at the damage there. Moving on to the lethality side. So um, I did make one tweak to this particular um, analysis. So basically, in the Battlelytics engine, the time to kill prior to this video uh, was always your maximum time to kill, right? So we plotted all the points that the mech achieved kills in the 10,000 simulations, and for anything that was left over, anytime the Javelin survived, we sort of plotted a fitted line to that, and we extrapolated out like, you know, 12.2, 12.3 turns, whatever. Almost everything was in the 12s, the 11s, the 13s. It really wasn't a very good indicator of time to kill. So what I did was I sort of flipped that around a little bit, still extrapolated and got the kill time for those outliers where it wasn't able to kill it off in 12 turns. But then I sort of looked at the average time to kill across the entire match. Uh, and so that gives me sort of a better representation of, I think, what the mechs are capable of doing and what you can expect you know, if you were to run this game on your own, um, you know, right against the Javelin, how many turns is it actually going to take me? Um, and that kind of factors in, you know, when my weapons come into range and all these other things. So I thought it was a little bit of a better representation. So I made that, uh, I made that edit there on the fly. Um, let's look at the numbers. So lethality index damage per hit on the Banshee was over a point higher. So 6.71 to the Highlanders 5.19, and this is simply a byproduct of those massive three cannons, the PPC, PPC, AC-10. Uh, you know I love AC-10s, uh, PPCs are great. I mean, anytime you can just deliver those massive chunks of damage, it's terrifying, right? Um, and so, especially the smaller mechs. So this mech, again, damage per hit much higher. Critical hits, uh, very close. So within, within a couple of tenths, 4.81 on the Banshee, 5.02 to the Highlander. The Highlander able to deliver a little bit more. Um, now the Banshee does have, again, the two small lasers, the four medium lasers. It has a much broader array of weaponry, but it's not able to bring them all into play in a realistic game and still manage the heat effectively. So when you look at you know the shots being delivered from weapons per heat, uh, the Highlander actually has the upper hand there. So generating slightly more critical hits, um, than the Banshee. Now time to kill was really cool to see. These mechs were almost identical. I sort of went out to the next decimal place to see. Um, and so the Highlander just slightly longer, you know, by almost negligible amount there um, than the Banshee. But basically um, what it comes down to is that again, that Highlander able to deliver more damage early in the game uh, and really a much more consistent damage curve Whereas the Banshee sort of takes a little bit of time and then it just spikes up and that's where you get all your, you know, you're just the devastation 
begins. Um, when we look at the actual results of the lethality test, so the Banshee was able to kill the Javelin 98.2% of the time, the, uh, the Highlander 90.7% of the time. So the Banshee had the upper hand there. Um, a lot of that really attributed to the number of head kills. Again, the Banshee delivering three different weapons there that can do 10 points of damage. Most rounds early in the game, it's firing at least two of them. Um, and so, you know, you have those opportunities much more for those instant kills than the Highlander does, which only has the one PPC. You know, yes, the LRM-20 on average does the same amount of damage, but again, this lethality test is about how much damage can you do, you know, in that one shot, right? Those AC-20s, you know, just delivering huge chunks of damage, right? PPCs, AC-10s, big chunks of damage, Gauss rifles. Those are the types of things this test really shows. And so you can see uh, the Banshee eked it out because it does have, uh, it's just more lethal of a mech. So um, let's get into the defensive analysis. This is where I think, or at least I'm hoping, the Highlander will shine with that 100% armor coverage. Okay, so let's dive right into um, the mobility side. So these mechs are both a 3.5. Uh, that means that if they're moving in a straight line, running full MP, they can claim at best a plus two target mod. If they, you know, they turn, they have to go uphill, they enter a forest, anything at all, stumbling over rubble, they're down to a plus one, which is a big difference. Um, and again, they can lose that mod entirely pretty quickly with any sort of fancy maneuvers or, you know, uh, a turn and a heat penalty, those types of things. So really not great in terms of mobility, but the Highlander has those jump jets, which are just liquid gold. Um, in terms of, you know, a mech of this size with the armament and the armor that it has. Um, you know, not to mention, of course, that that famed Highlander burial that we talked about, but uh, just the ability to really um, get out of harm's way or get into line of sight, or if you can win initiative, outmaneuver opponents and get those rear arc shots. Um, you know, so there's a lot of interesting things that, uh, that this mech can do with those jump jets. Um, and really, they make up for... I think otherwise mediocre or very subpar, I should say, uh, mobility. Now, uh, motive hits. Let's talk about motive hits here real quick. So the Banshee, 14.1% of the time this thing's looking at motive hits. The Highlander, only 3.7. That's really, really low. Um, and I actually ran the sim a couple of times because I wasn't sure what was going on there. But really, um, the thing's just a tank, right? I mean, look at those legs, 90 tons right? Fully armored legs, basically. Um, it's got, you know, all that media internal structure. Um, the legs are packed out with criticals. So there's a lot going on there um, that really contribute to that and help to keep this mech mobile. Um, and then, you know, when we look at the survivability, though, um, very similar. The Highlander was slightly worse. So I was hoping that the Highlander would be better. Um, you know, get 100% armor, you know, did better on the motive test. But at the end of the day, uh, ammo is what sort of Put the put the sort of the um, the scale in favor of the banshee. So the banshee survived here 89.5 percent of the time. It was destroyed only 10.5 percent of the time by that awesome. The Highlander uh, was only destroyed 13.3 percent of the time. So again, both of these mechs doing incredible, uh, excellent survivability. Um, but again, the Banshee sort of edged it out and, you know, really comes down to the ammo. So Banshee had 5.4% ammo criticals, that Highlander looking at 8.2%. Now, again, we're talking really low numbers, um, but if we're going to nitpick here, we look at the Highlander, you look at the record sheet, um, the Banshee and the Highlander are very different. The Banshee has like a million things in those, in those side torsos packing out that armor. The Highlander does not. It has less so you're almost twice as likely to hit ammo in the Highlander um, as you are in the Banshee. And if you look at the ammo crit chance by location below, uh, the Banshee bar is on the left, the Highlander bar is on the right. So if you look at the right torso, again, it's almost double. Left torso, almost double for the Highlander to have a chance for a critical hit on an ammo bin. So that kind of contributes to it. So something else that's interesting to look at. Highlander packing in, I believe it was 2.5 tons more armor. But if you look at the Banshee, those side torsos are at 100%. Um, so basically, it's the same. Uh, actually, it's more, at, uh, more armor than the Highlander, right? Because it's got another 5 tons. So really has more armor on those side torsos where all that ammo is located, located than the Highlander. So, so kind of interesting 
uh, interesting thing to look at there. Now, um, again, you know, this, this central MEC diagram here, um, the, if you look at the location, you know, the left side bar is the Banshee, the right side bar is the Highlander, the green bar represent the percentage of armor at that location, the yellow bar representing the expected percentage of armor. So the Banshee low on legs, contributing to those higher than normal motive hits, low on the arms, which, you know, frankly is not a big deal. Um, not a lot of weapons going on there. In fact, the one I believe doesn't have any weapons at all. Great for punching, but that's about it. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's really smart armor distribution on this Mac just right out of the gate. Um, both of them way over armored on the rear torso. The Highlander, um, e even though the yellow bar doesn't really show it because it's expecting 100%, but just like grossly over armored in the rear. I mean, you could basically walk the Highlander backwards into enemy fire and it would be okay. Um, so, you know, onto the right side. So cumulative survivability, I brought this back into the side-by-side -side analysis. I rescaled the X-axis down to 20% just so you can get a closer look at kind of what's going on here. And again, you can kind of see uh, the ammo kills and how they contribute um, to the Highlander's death. And as you get closer, and it's facing down that awesome, and the awesome gets those PPCs in short range, those ammo um, explosions, those ammo deaths just really spike up quite high um, because, you know, it's, it's delivering more fire, and those torsos are just very vulnerable. Uh, again, you know, you're looking at a one in three chance, I believe, on the left torso of hitting ammo. So that's basically all she wrote. But again, you know, overall, these defensive numbers are tremendous. Uh, these mechs are both really, really tough on the field. Um, so really close here, I think, overall. Um, the Banshee kind of ekes it out a little bit on the overall, you know, survivability number. But at the end of the day, I think the Highlander is still very much in this, uh, in, in the race here. So let's, um, let's check out efficiency and see how they stack up there. All right, so this is my favorite screen out of all of them. I love looking at the efficiency numbers. Again, you know, that efficiency being sort of the damage per battle value that you're getting, right? Um, sort of that, that currency of, of, you know, sort of the bang for the buck, if you will, for the mech. Um, the effectiveness benchmarks here are, uh, are interesting. So there's some good data in here, sort of hidden away. Um, so what you see is the survivability of these mechs first in the white, uh, the white donut charts there, right? So let's, let's start there, 89.5 um, and 86.7. So both these mechs, again, very close in terms of the overall survivability. And when we look at the effectiveness benchmark, you can see, again, uh, that Banshee, just tremendous numbers in close range. Um, that damage curve just spikes right up there around, um, you know, that, that six inch mark. Um, the Highlander kind of peaks at six inches, has a much more steady output sort of in that back half of the game. Um, and then it kind of peters off as it gets closer and then levels out at, at the point blank range. Now, how does that affect the overall numbers? Well, you know, not a whole lot, but what's interesting to note is that the Highlander is actually taking less of a hit on its effective ACD because it's actually doing less damage at close range. It's actually doing more of its damage at longer ranges. So, you know, as we get from our baseline damage to our optimized damage to our effective damage, the Highlander actually closes the gap a little bit. So it's still, you know, about 17 points or so off uh, from the, from the Highland, I'm sorry, from the Banshee. Um, but, you know, the Highlander is, you know, you know slightly more effective um, by percent right, going from the optimized to the effective, uh, just again, because it's taking less of a hit at that, uh, you know, at that close range, like so much of the Banshee's damage is being done, um, almost twice as much as the Highlander at those close ranges, so again, when you hit that by the 89%, um, you know, it's taking a bigger, ch bigger chunk of damage off. Again, we're still talking about decimals, both of these mechs just do so much damage and are so effective, um, but when it comes to the efficiency, I think the real killer here is that 100 or so BV, that 114 BV difference between the Banshee and the Highlander, right? So the final efficiency number, Banshee at 7.49, the Highlander only at 6.38. And I say only 6.38, that's still a great number. It's, uh, you know, it's about where the Zeus is. It's definitely to the right of average. Um, so it, it's above average is what I'm saying there. Um, the 7.49, way above average. So again, this is like a bell curve. Most mechs are gonna be hitting around a five. Um, so 6.3, 6.4, really good place to be. Um, but again, you know, you're paying so many points in battle value for that 100% armor coverage on that 90-ton mech. Um, it jacks that cost up 
And, and so, you know, you're paying for that because it's not dealing as much damage. Um, and so that's why the efficiency is basically lower. Um, going over to the gunnery score sensitivity, I made a couple of just cosmetic changes here. I put both of the mechs on the same chart so you could kind of see how it scales out. Um, it was a great recommendation, by the way, because you're able to look at the slope of those trend lines side by side, right? And so you can see that the slope of those lines, which incidentally is the gunnery score sensitivity um, for, you, for you math guys out there, it's almost identical. And if you look at the sensitivity again, it's it's a couple tenths different, 6.24 versus, I'm sorry, 0.624 versus 0.645. The Banshee is just a better buy, right? Um, you know, a, a Highlander <laughs> at, you know, Gunnery Zero is still not as good as a Banshee at Gunnery Two in terms of how much damage per battle value you're gonna deliver. Um, so it's kind of interesting to look at these numbers on the same plot side by side, and you can really kind of see, um, yeah, you know, it's 20, 18 points of damage or whatever it was, 17 points of damage, you know, and the effective ACD difference and the survivability is very close. But when you talk about, you know, what you're actually getting for the cost, yeah, it's only 100 BV, but if you're really looking to min-max, um, the Banshee is just a better buy. Um, now, again, just to go back to sensitivity, neither of these mechs really showed any real affinity um, they're both kind of in the middle range there, um, so no huge returns. I'd play probably either of these mechs at anywhere between Gunnery 3 and Gunnery 2. Um, probably Gunnery 2 for the Banshee if I could get away with the points. All right, so here we are, the final analysis of this, you know, part one of our King of the Hill shootout here. So um, let's just review some key numbers here from our Battlelytics engine. So the optimized ACD for these two mechs, 193.2 on the Banshee, 175.1 on that Highlander. Time to kill very close 9.55 versus 9.57. Survival rate also within a few percent 89.5 on the Banshee, 86.7% survivability for the Highlander. Movement profile is very similar except the big differentiator that Highlander has those jump jets, it can DFA, can get up terrain easier, can do a lot more in the city um, than that Banshee can. So that's something to, to you know to, to keep in mind when choosing these mechs. Redline heat, uh, the Banshee was at 197, the Highlander at 119. So the Highlander much easier to control, uh, much easier on the pilot there than the Banshee. So uh, efficiency score, we just talked about this, right? 749 on the uh, on the Banshee, 6.38 on the Highlander. So that Banshee over a full point higher. Um, which is pretty good. And then sensitivity, we're at uh, 0.624 versus 0.645. So neither really showing um, too much affinity uh, for uh, you know high gunnery, but also um, definitely higher than the average, I think. So how did that shake out in terms of points? Well, um, offensively and defensively, these mechs both almost scored perfectly, 4.5 out of 5 on offense and defense again for both mechs. Mobility, the Highlander wins out. Uh, in terms of control, the Highlander wins out. But again, efficiency, you're bang for buck. That Banshee taking the cake there. So uh, very, very close match um, uh, so far. And, and, you know, I mean, I think my heart wants to say Banshee, but I mean, still this Highlander, a very good contender here. So let's take a look at the threat assessment. So I, I want to point out one more change I made. I was looking at the threat. Um, over a few different mechs, and, and it wasn't really sitting right with me because mechs that had, you know, like really big alpha strike capabilities, um, but very high heat load, um, you know, didn't have the right sort of uh, ratio of heat, uh, or rather the ratio of threat versus like mechs like, you know, the Assassin, for example, that don't do a whole lot of damage, but really don't build up any heat at all ever uh, unless they're jumping. So those ratios were a little bit off to me. And so the way they were set up before for reference was it was like maximum alpha strike capability um, and, you know, divided by your um, your maximum average calculated damage and divided by, you know, your heat ratio, um, basically a sliding scale from 0 to 30, um, depending on how much heat you were building up. Um, that was problematic because, again, what I just described, right? You had these weird outlying mechs where, um, you know, like a stalker is this just crazy alpha strike, but builds up like ridiculous amounts of heat um, and things like the Banshee too. So looking at some of these bigger mechs made me refactor it. So what I did was I took out the alpha strike out of the equation entirely and I put damage, your average calculated damage, 
you know, on a sliding scale. Um, so basically, you know, what, what, uh, what you're looking at is trying to, uh, like a perfect mech, for example, would do, you know, 30 damage and build up no heat, right? I know there's mechs that can do more damage and build up no heat, but that's, that's sort of, you know, you can also, you know, bleed off, you know, 20 points of heat in a turn. But really, we're looking to kind of normalize these things on a sliding scale from 0 to 30 on heat, 0 to 30 on damage. We get these sort of ratios, these modifiers, we multiply them together, and you get your threat ratio. Um, so when I applied this out to a few different mechs, and, uh, you know, you'll see this in our next video um, where we do part two of our King of the Hill comparison, um, I think these numbers make a lot more sense, and they're actually more illuminating to some of the sort of hidden capabilities of the mech that you really that really aren't evident um, in the sort of the initial pass. So let's dive into this real quick. So the the Banshee. Uh, first of all, this mech does a crazy amount of damage. It has uh, a, a massive alpha strike, as you can see when you get within nine inches. Um, it's just a huge amount of damage there. Um, the uh, so so the average calculated damage is 26 um, on just on you know, again on average at nine inches you can do 26 points of damage that's on average um, maximally uh, I think you could do another 35 on top of that uh, so whatever that comes out to and when you get the small lasers in range of three inches you can tack on some additional damage there but really. Um, this mech is fighting its its heat, right? It builds up a lot of heat. We saw that in the benchmarks. Um, so the threat is interesting. Where do you want to play this mech? So if you look at the threat curve, don't shoot everything at nine inches, right? That's a terrible idea. Um, you're looking at those massive plus four modifiers for long range on your SRM on four medium lasers. It's just not worth it. Um, keep firing those big guns at nine inches. Once you get within six inches, then, you know, you start to threaten a little bit more with those medium lasers. Um, and that's when really you can start opening up uh, with bigger and more, you know, more, uh, I guess, devastating strikes from those weapons. Um, if you need to alpha strike, definitely do it there. Again, like a lot of these mechs where you have, where you're laden down with medium lasers, you, you know, you're almost tempted to fire them at nine inches, but you really don't want to. Um, you really just want to hold off on that until you get a little bit closer. Uh, but the mech does threaten quite a bit, um, again, out at, out at distance, you know, starting around 12 inches when those PPCs are in medium range, um, and then into 10 inches, that's where it's a sweet spot, because again, that AC-10 also in medium range, so again, you can do, um, you can do some pretty serious hurt uh, from that range as well, you know, again, maximum alpha strike of 30 points of damage, which is pretty good. Um, but the Highlander, no slacker either. Uh, in fact, also doing 30 damage all the way through to 9 inches, um, starting though all the way out at you know at 18 inches, um, but also doing 20 damage from 21 inches uh, you know into the to the point when the PPC comes into play. So it actually is beating that sort of banshee, um, if you will, out in that you know that left side of the chart um, because it can actually deliver that initial LRM damage, which is pretty substantial, and then it kind of runs with it pretty well. Um, but you can see that the Highlander has some better threat in that nine inch range, and then actually exceeds the Banshee um, in that seven, six, five inch range. And that's because, again, the heat, right? The heat is killing the Banshee. That doesn't mean it can't do more damage, but the Highlander can do more sustained damage over time um, because again, you know, if you fire everything and you walk, I think you build up seven points of heat. But that Highlander is scary, right? That Highlander can do a ton of damage. If you get within seven inches or six inches, and that LRM is at point blank range, even with the minimum range penalty um, at six inches and, and even five, it can still really, um, you know, really punish uh, some targets there. But point for point, damage for damage, if you look, you got to look at the, all the data on the chart, those red bars, you know, you can see that that Banshee, even on, on average, is doing so much damage. Um, and that's really what makes it such a threat on the battlefield and, and why it performed so well, uh, I think, in our last battle report. Um, I said the last campaign, really, I think I played the Banshee in maybe three out of the four matches. Um, and it was awesome. I love the mech. So, all right, so let's talk about the threat envelope of these two mechs. So Banshee on the left, um, Highlander on the right. Really not much to say. The Banshee has its PPC on the left arm. The Highlander has its PPC on the opposite arm. Uh, it's got that SRM, I believe, in the, in the left arm. So you can see it's got a little bit more arc of fire with the SRM in close. But the real big differentiator for me is the Highlander's range. So getting out to 21 inches 
Um, so that is that's big, you know. Being able to deliver damage early in the game again, it can win. It can win games. You know, you can get that lucky throw armor critical. You can just weaken the mech just enough so when they get into that 18 inch range, that PPC can punch through. It's big, um, so it, it makes a very big difference. Um, and one of the things, just incidentally, that I like to do to the Banshee is I swap that SRM6 for an LRM5. That does a couple of things. You know, one, it lessens the heat load at point blank because you're not firing the LRM5. And two, it does give you a little bit more of a deep threat um, so that you can start pinging people at least. Um, so anyway, but uh, rolls. Man, I'm still, I'm still stuck on a winner here. I got to tell you, I've been thinking about this. I really don't know uh, which one would be a winner for me. But anyway, on to the rolls. Um, the Banshee clearly is a better brawler. Um, it has more weapons. It can take more damage. You know, we saw we saw the toughness of the mech. You know, it's less susceptible to those ammo criticals. Um, and I think just overall, just the maximum alpha strike at those short ranges. Again, like this is what you want. You want to be able to take targets out of the fight fast. Um, you know, you don't want to be in a slap fight with somebody. You just want to deliver a knockout blow. And if you have to let the thing cool down for a turn, so be it. Um, I think the Highlander could probably do okay. The problem is, if you get within three inches of that mech, you're in minimum range of the PPC, minimum range of the LRM-20. The LRM-20 is basically useless, um, and so that's kind of kind of the deal there and why I chose um, a Brawler for the Banshee, not for the Highlander. Um, the Highlander, I think, would be really good in a defensive position. Um, it's got the toughness and the mobility to kind of uh, hang out, uh, lay in some fire, um, again, you can, you can use the jump jets to get into difficult, like, you know, up on elevation and things like that to provide better cover fire and line of sight, um, in a sort of pseudo fire support role while these, you know, enemy mechs close on your position. And once they get close, you know, you got to keep them in that, you know, looking at the threat chart, you know, keep them anywhere outside of five inches or even within just within five inches. And I think you'll be able to do okay with the Highlander. Again, if you let them close too much, you're in trouble. Back that Highlander up with a couple picket mechs. I think you'll be in really good shape. Um, both of these mechs would be phenomenal frontline mechs. They're slow, so it's going to be hard to get them up the field quickly. Um, but if you're with an assault lance and everybody else is slow as molasses, you'll be fine. Um, and then command mechs. Again, they had decent gunnery sensitivity, but even still, I think if you slap a you know a two a gunnery pilot in there or a you know two or three or however you know however you play um, I think you'll definitely see a return on investment you know put and plus if you're playing our new campaign rules check those out and you're playing persistent pilots right you want to protect them with a mech that's tough and both of these mechs again 4.5 out of 5 on the defensive side they show tremendous toughness so um, I have to pick now so I, I got to pick the Banshee um, I love the Highlander it pains me to pick the Banshee but I think if these guys were toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I think that Banshee is going to win uh, almost every time. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. So post your comments. Let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know who you think is the winner of this Part 1 King of the Hills Slugfest Assault Mech Shootout. Um, again, always love, love to hear and read through your comments. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. we got Part 2 coming up real soon. Atlas vs. King Crab. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm excited to see how all the numbers shake out. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, leave us a comment, and stay tuned for more from Death from Above Wargaming. Take care.